In this video, I'm going to show you how to build these four really easy to make wooden Father's Day gifts or even make them for themselves. They're really fun. You're going to love it, including this one here that only requires cutting to complete. All that coming up. Hey everyone, it's David here from David's DIY Reviews. On this channel, we do a lot of tool reviews, testing, and DIY projects just like this one. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for a lot more really great content. Now let's get into it. So these balancing line holders, these are a really nice one. I like these. These are pretty cool. Um, and all it is is just one flat piece of wood. It's eight and a half inches long, and the hole is going to be two inches down to center. And I'm going to have all those dimensions and instructions in the description below. These are a nice little quick build. They work really well. I mean, you put it on your counter, whatever you want to do. They're pretty sturdy. I really like these, and here's how to do it. Now for this balancing wine holder, the first thing you want to do is just cut your piece to length. You're going to want it to be eight and a half inches long. So I'll just make my line there. And then you're going to want the hole to be two inches from the top and that's going to make it balance just perfectly. So I've gone ahead and marked center. Now you're going to want to drill this hole around anywhere from an inch and a quarter to an inch and five eighths. And then the angle on the end is going to want to be 45 degrees. And once you've cut it, that's going to make it balance and stand up just perfectly. Now you could use a hole saw for this. You could use a hand drill. You could use, you know, a, a drill bit that big if you had one. I'm going to go ahead and use this Forstner bit because it works really well. And it's going to make a nice clean cut. Now the next step is going to be cutting the end off at 45 degrees. Now this can be a little tricky. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, Make my line here across the top at 45 degrees. I've got my line drawn down this side. And then I'm going to actually draw a line down the other side as well. So I can follow that down with the saw as I cut. Now you're going to want to go ahead and make that 45 degree cut. Now all that's left to do is stand up your edges really quick. And you've got a finished product. And like I said, there's a couple different ways you can make that hole. You can drill it with a Forstner bit, a hole saw a drill bit of that size. You can drill a starting hole and then use a coping saw. So just, you know, whatever works for you. The angle, 45 degrees, if it's not perfect, it's still gonna work. And if you find you put your bottle in and it's falling over one way or the other, you just kind of move the bottle within the hole a little bit and it works great. The other nice thing about these, I mean, you could make this out of a piece of reclaimed wood. You could make this out of plastic. If you're a metal worker, you could use metal. It's gonna work with anything. It's a really, really nice, quick idea. I really like this one. Next, we're going to go on to this really great phone holder. Um, it's a pretty quick build, a little bit of nailing, a little bit of gluing, not too hard. And I'm going to show you just how you go about it. So for this phone holder, it, the, uh, the main portion is going to be six inches long. So the first thing, like always, you want to do is you lay out. So I'm just going to mark my six inches and draw my line across. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut that main piece off because that is just a solid piece of wood. There's no more to do to that once you cut it off. The back portion that props this against the ground, it's going to be an inch and a half. So I'm just going to once again mark that an inch and a half and draw my line across. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that off right away. Now the front piece, the piece that actually holds the phone, it's going to be an inch and a half as well. So again, I'll mark that and do my layout right away on that, draw my line across. Now the reason for the hole on the front of this is gonna be for your phone uh, cord to go through. Now you can either drill that with a big drill bit, you can just cut a square notch. What I'm gonna do actually though, is I'm gonna use a, a Forstner bit to cut that out just because I happen to have one and it works well for it. You could also just leave it flat and not cut a notch and your phone can still rest on there like that. So if you're gonna drill it out or make a notch, you're gonna to wanna to find center and mark that. And once again, if you're actually gonna drill a hole or cut it a notch, you don't want it to quite cut your piece in half. You want some material left over so that when you put it on, the notch is just in the front part. Now, I suppose you could do this with a hole saw as well, but the interesting thing is here, is the Forstner bit actually is gonna stick out past the end of the wood, kind of in, in midair. And that makes it 
you know, a little bit interesting to do, but if you're careful, it's not too bad. And now that you've got your hole drilled, you're going to want to go ahead and just cut that off. So again, I'm just going to use my miter box here because it works, it's convenient, and cut that off. So now if everything is going according to plan, you should have three pieces that look something like this. So now when we nail and glue these to the main portion, you're going to want to have it an inch and a half up from the bottom to the center. So I'm going to go ahead and actually draw a line across at an inch and a half on both sides. That way it's going to be really easy to line up both pieces when I go to nail and glue them on. And I've kind of actually decided to change where I want to mount this on it. I've gone down a little bit. You can just kind of move it like this and play around with the angle to get it to, you know, stand exactly how you're going to want it. So I'm going to go ahead and actually get both my nails started so that when I nail this through, it's going to be easier to hang on to and the nails will just go straight through into it nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of glue on this, not too much. I mean, it's not a structural piece. It just has to hold together. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, nail it up. Now when I nail the other portion on, what I'm actually going to do is glue it up, hold it there, and just put one nail right in the center. And that's going to be enough to hold it. And once you've got it all nailed together and glued up, we can just give it a final little sand. And then you can go ahead and paint this. You can stain it, you can do whatever you want with it. It looks really nice, it works really well. So like the wine holder, there's gonna be a couple different ways to make this hole. Whatever works for you best. Uh, the overall length is six inches. These pieces are one and a half. And like I said, the dimensions and instructions will be in the description below and in the show notes. Um, also, you know, whatever hole you make is gonna be up to you. For the wine holder, inch and a half to inch and five eighths works pretty good. I actually forgot to mention that. But I mean, you know, whatever's big enough to fit your cord through, the plug through, that's going to work great. Now, the next one is going to be this really neat uh, phone charging kind of station as well. What it, ha what it does is it, is it hangs on the plug on the wall, and then you can put your phone on it like that. It's a really neat one for, you know, beside a bed, anywhere like that. So I'll show you how to make it. Let's have a look. So for this hanging uh, phone charger holder, the first thing you want to do again is your layout. So I'm going to mark this at 10 inches and draw my line across. So the hole you're going to make in the top of this holder that's going to hang on the plug is going to depend on the size of the plug you're using. The size of the hole I'm going to make is inch and five eighths, which is the size of the Forstner bit I'm using. So I'm going to mark mine an inch and a half down and that's going to leave enough material on the top here to not break or you know, anything like that. So now we're going to go ahead and cut that off. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill this hole. It's going to make it easier to cut through with your hole saw or forstner bit or whatever it is that you're going to do. Minor uh, technical difficulty there. Now you could use a, a hole saw for this, uh, a really big drill bit if you had it. The other option would be drilling in with like you know a, a half inch bit or a smaller bit and using uh, a coping saw but I've got a forstner bit here and it's going to work really well so that's what I'm going to do. And the portion that holds the phone that you're going to attach to it is going to be an inch and a half so again I'm just going to draw my line at inch and a half and finish my layout for that last piece. Draw my line across. In this piece, I'm going to have an, a whole half cut out here as well for the phone cord and plug to go through. Now, you can either do that with a saw, cut a notch. You can just not do it at all. It's really up to you what you do there. So I've gone ahead and marked my center here, and I'm going to go ahead and drill that out. And now if everything has gone according to plan, you should have a couple pieces that look like this. And now we're ready for assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and get my nails preset so it's going to be a lot easier to nail together. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glue on this. You don't need too much. I mean, this isn't like a structural type of thing. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on there, flip it over, and nail it up. And now that we're done, we can give it, you know, one last final sand. Clean up all your edges. Kind of, if your edges are a little uneven where you've 
attached it together, you can just give it a good sand and that's gonna smooth it up and true it up and make it look really just perfect. So this phone holder is gonna be 10 inches long. The hole is one and a half inches down from center and this bottom piece is inch and a half, just like the other ones. These are all very close, same dimensions, really easy. All the dimensions will be in the description below. Um, and this one, you know, you can make it shorter if you want, if your phone's shorter. You know, you can also make this out of reclaimed wood, plastic metal. You can paint it, you can stain it, you know, you can color match it to your wall. It's kind of a neat piece, kind of a neat, neat idea. Uh, this next one, it's got to be my favorite. This next one here requires no nailing, no gluing, no screwing, nothing like that. Just two slots, a handsaw, a clamp or a vise. That's all it's going to take and you'll be done this one. I'm going to show you guys just how you go about doing that. So the first step is going to be doing your layout for the bottom piece. So I'm just going to mark this at 5 inches and then draw my line across. And then you want to lay out the notch and the notch is going to be an inch and a quarter up from the bottom and then you're going to cut the notch halfway across whatever the width of your material is. And then your notch is going to be just over three quarters of an inch wide so that the two pieces can slide together. So then you just want to go ahead and draw your notch. That way when you cut it you can stop exactly where you have to. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out both pieces at once. Now I know if you lay out both and then you cut it in half you're going to lose a bit of length because of the kerf which is the you know the gap that the saw cuts. But for this project, it's not the end of the world. It's more of just a, you know, a decorative piece. So I'm going to mark that and draw my line across for this is the upright piece. And for the upright piece, the notch is going to be two inches up from the bottom. So I'm just going to mark that. And I'm going to go ahead and lay that out, draw it out the exact same way I did the first one. So now you're going to have both pieces laid out, ready to cut. Now I'm going to use my miter box and just a regular handsaw to make these cuts. But I mean, you can just hold the piece of wood, you can clamp it down, whatever works for you. Now I would recommend cutting both your notches out before you actually cut your piece in half because that's going to make it a lot easier to cut the notches instead of having to handle smaller pieces of wood. And you just want to cut all the way down just to the bottom of your notch that you drew. So cut both sides right down to the bottom. And then what I'm going to use to cut the bottom of my notch is just this little wire coping saw I have. Um, it works really great because you can just put it down in there, turn it 90 degrees and cut across. But you can use any coping saw for this or you can just cut down in with your hand saw a few times and then you know break the pieces off and sand it or file it or whatever works for you just to get that notch cut out. And then you just want to do the same thing with the other notch. And remember when you get to the bottom of your notch to make sure your saw is flat so that the bottom of your notch isn't going to have angles. Now in order to cut your second notch out with the coping saw, you're going to have to cut your pieces apart because the C of the coping saw that I have isn't big enough and most won't be big enough to cut that bottom notch out. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my pieces in half now. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the other bottom of my notch in the upright piece. And when you cut with a coping saw across like this, it's, it's easy to, you know, kind of get out of whack a little bit or have your line not be perfect. But that's stuff you can fix up later with a file or some really coarse sandpaper. So don't worry about that too much. Now you just want to give it a good little sand. Sand up all your edges. Sand in that slot that you made really nicely. And then it's going to look really good. And once you're done, you can, you can paint this, you could stain it. I like to leave it raw because I kind of like that look. You can do whatever you want. So like I said, all the dimensions and some instructions will be in the description below. And you know what? These make really great Father's Day gifts or gifts for any occasion, but also they'd be really great just projects to make on Father's Day with the family, you know, with your significant other, you know, whatever you want to do. Maybe you could, you could all learn a little about woodworking. You know, they're, they're really easy, really quick. You're going to love it. And if, if using woodworking tools and doing this kind of thing is new to you, you maybe you're struggling a little bit, but you know, you really want to do it, 
check out the uh, link in the YouTube card above. I've got a playlist in there that's going to show you just how to use all the hand tools that I use to make these projects. It's a really great little playlist, you know. Have a look. It's going to teach you how to do it. And this is going to be a great little project for you. And you can really build on this. There's a lot more you can do with these skills. And like always, guys, see you in the next video.